But every time I stand on a stage facing the young Indians, I feel like Jambavan in Ramayan trying to tell Hanuman, you have forgotten what you are capable of doing and it's my humble duty. Not that I look like Jambavan, but if that helps. What is Utala? These are the traditional smithy and forges. And there's this place in Malapuram district in Kerala where massive remnants of such forges have been found. They're not big structures, but you know we always had a decentralized distributed industry. We were not about assembly lines and massive organizations of companies and businesses and so on. So it's a place called Arak Parambu. So Arak, the word is a corruption of Uruk. Uruk or Uku is the name for woods steel which later on now the world knows is as Damascus steels. Very good morning. Uh, namaste to everyone. It's an honor and a pleasure to be uh, in this great lecture hall in IIT Indore. This edition of the weekly comes out. This is a Malayalam weekly, a very famous weekly called Madhubhumi, which has been around for 100 years now. And they incidentally had an article on the ancient furnace technologies and forges technologies of Kerala. So I was extremely glad to put together a presentation thanks to the IKS Center for Kalaripayat and Siddhar Tradition at Trinity College, where I'm the principal. And thanks to Sujitra Madhusudan and the team at IKS who put together a beautiful presentation very quickly from the notes that I gave them based on the article. And look at where the serendipity takes you. I was here this morning, this very morning, having breakfast, and I run into Balal sir and Venkat Ramanji. And he was somebody who was instrumental in this research that I'm presenting. So there is a lot that can happen if you have a very deep desire. At every time I stand on a stage facing the young Indians, I feel like Jambavan in Ramayan trying to tell Hanuman, you have forgotten what you are capable of doing. And it's my humble duty, not that I look like Jambavan, but if that helps. Because part of how we remember our history is because we used beautiful metaphors. There's always this confusion about our history is not written like history, it is written like a mythology, like stories. But would we have any history left if our history was written like the history textbooks of today? Would anybody preserve a history textbook? It's because of the stories and the metaphors. And our metaphors are full of metallic origins. We forge, we recast, and I think it's time for Vinodji and Ishwarji to think of recasting the way panel discussions are done. Because we are, in, uh, you know, infinitely we are obliged to the informal sabhas that happen around such meetings where knowledge transfer happens. So without further delay, Utala Taras. So Ut in Malayalam literally means blowing. So Ut, Ut and Ala is the place where the smiths work, blacksmiths, goldsmiths. So Utala Tara is literally where the blowing of the furnace used to happen. And that's one of the ruins. The work I am presenting is entirely done by a society. And this is taken from an article written by V.S. Gerard. So I'll credit them first. So this came in this weekly. Uh, I have only knowledge of this and after this a lot of Googling and maybe chat GPT can help recently when we go into research further. The author of the article is V.H. Dirar and it's about the work done by PPST, the Patriotic and People Oriented Science and Technology Society and Foundation uh, in which our dear Balal sir was part of. And the study commenced in 1989 and it was led by Mr. Aravind Dakshin who is a Gandhian and a writer. So. What is Utala? These are the traditional smithy and forges. And there's this place in Malapuram district in Kerala where massive remnants of such forges have been found. They're not big structures, but you know we always had a decentralized distributed industry. We were not about assembly lines and massive organizations of companies and businesses and so on. So it's a place called Arak Parambu. So Arak, the word is a corruption of Uruk. Uruk or Uku, is the name for woods steel, which later on now the world knows is as Damascus steel. So it used to be original Indian Uruk steel. So Uruk Paramba from where it comes, and they found three remnants. Two of them got destroyed because you know Kerala always keeps shifting to the next available cash crop. So we were, we were building rubber estates there, and two of them destroyed. But luckily, people didn't destroy the third one because they believed 
that one of the local deities tikuti chatan will curse them if they destroy it so lucky for us for the uh, ppsk society one of them remained preserved now they are structurally different from what was described by francis becanner in 1810 so this means either they are much older than the time when he found forges and you know most of the time people never get to things the sweeping statements that we hear in history are so misleading when you say the british were here the portuguese were there french were here to our uh, tiny minds and imaginations we imagine a map of india in which british and portuguese and french and everybody keeps walking over or the moguls so the problem with that is india is so vast huge and diverse that things never happened in the same way in the same place throughout so some technologies remain preserved and they exist till today so we had uh, he had seen this in valangeri and angadipuram market places there but uh, these were not what he described so we can imagine that these were much older they were prepared from specialized mud and then the temperature is this unimaginable 1540 degrees celsius that they maintained inside it so when the work was happening we still had craftsmen who knew this so talacheriyan and konyayappan were the sons and sons in law the last master craftsman accepted as raman and that is one of the photographs so what the british did was they built a modern furnace a company called portonovo to create steel and that you know as they have done to different indian industries that destroyed the steel industry but come world war 2 they were in need of steel so they had to come back and ask for any remaining craftsmen and they uh, found mr raman and they tried to recreate the forges and there was this uh, he was also in charge of forges in several different sectors so you can imagine you know like the the vice chancellors and the people who had research labs there will be one master craftsman who will oversee the grander technology that happens in different parts uh so as per these are mind boggling numbers you know 300 tons of steel getting created and exported every year to kochi so and they were definitely if it comes to kochi they will be meant for exporting and so on so these are the 1854 records and uh, the team there did a fantastic job they met with these craftsmen the names are there cheri parambil moidin gutti karipala mohammed uh, neruvil alavi haji kalvetti mohammed uh, so these show that the industry cut across religious lines and because this was a, a particular caste of people who were blacksmiths and goldsmiths and so on so the religion didn't really matter so there was an attempt to recreate and uh, balal sir was telling us that uh, there was another attempt in iit bombay to do the same and they succeeded in their third attempt which again is going back to our traditional aspect of you'll succeed the third time if the first two attempts fail uh, and they cataloged around 50 centers tremendous uh, amount of centers in palakkad kolikode and malappuram district so much is written about kerala's spice trade and the ancient agricultural products of kerala but uh, nobody thinks about the implements that would have been required to create such kind of an agricultural tradition for tilling sowing harvesting everything preserving you will need metals right so who are the people who are making it it's not like we imported like today it was not like the electronics comes from korea or something we were building these tools and we have lost that knowledge so look at the amount of crops that a small state like kerala and this is particularly one part of kerala called malabar 490,279 acres of paddy and 38,000 acres of coffee and pepper 10,000 acres of other crops so all of this needed implements in metals they needed to be forged and crafted and then there were the other professions no carpenters blacksmiths goldsmiths barbers potters everybody needed implements tiny tiny sizes to really large scale implements so they also had to be crafted by the metallurgical traditions and most importantly the warriors the people of the kalari at that time punniyam valluvanadu uh, kadathanada uh, and even the southern traditional kalaris from which we have come we needed the weapons so once you go outside you will see how these things are made today but they have been there for centuries and centuries and weapon making was something that was part of a brilliant culture that existed again more and more numbers here the 1857 after the first war of independence uh, the british did some raiding and they were collecting the weapons uh, that were kept at homes at that time and in the traditional chieftain fiefdoms so some reports were made and look at those numbers 17295 just from a small region 
that much amount of weapons and in that 7503 this is coming in 19th century the amount of guns so when we talk about a single war of independence it was never a single war and we have uh, historical records from kerala about 1721 the atingal revolt 1741 when travancore kingdom became the first asian power to defeat a Brit- uh, european power in sea and land it defeated the dutch in the battle of kolachil and then went on to show how magnanimity experience and wisdom in victory is because the captured general delanoy was made the main trainer for the travancore army so we got the expertise without killing him made him the trainer he he uh, survived for decades after that and he was a great trainer and then he died in trivandrum and he happens to be related to uh, roosevelt franklin delano roosevelt so there is a tradition that goes all the way from travancore to the us presidency if you will so we were always at war nobody wanted to be messed with the freedoms and the traditional values of a society uh these are some of the praises that are said about the indian iron and steel work michael faraday whom everybody knows now despite not knowing many of the scientists of india uh his uh, uh co-worker had not- noted this was in the again uh, 19th century uh, 19th century and then captain campbell says the worst steel from india the cheapest steel from india is still better than the best steel he can find in the uk so all of us need to come together and think about why we have lost track of such tremendous technology thank you very much sir